Please take your seats quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Hi, guys, and welcome to OneMinuteTennis.com. In today's session, I want to talk to you about the three different endings that you see in pro players on the serve. I want to show you what they are, why they have these different endings, and what those endings achieve, and then how you can apply those endings, and whichever one is the most appropriate for you, into your game to really take your serve up a level. Now, although Federer is retired, we still know the big three were Federer, Jokovic, and Nadal. And it's quite interesting because Federer has remained with the same ending of his serve throughout his career. But Rafa Nadal and Novak Jokovic have made big changes to the ending of their serves. And those changes are different. Jokovic has changed one way and Nadal has changed the other. Why? Why make the changes? And why did they change in a different way to a different ending? Let's have a look at the three endings of the serve. The first one is where you collect the racket with the left hand. I'm going to show each of these in two or three different directions. So this is the bending of Federer, but it's about a third, third, third split with the pro players. So we go through the stroke, up, and then we collect the racket with the left hand. From this direction here, into the stroke, and we collect the racket with the left hand. The second ending is where the left hand goes back with the racket. And this is Jokovic now. It wasn't when he was younger. He used to collect the racket with the left hand. So now we go into the stroke, up, and now the left hand goes back with the racket. And then the third ending is where the left arm or the off hand is tucked into the body. And this is Rafa now. It didn't used to be in 2004, 5, 6, 7, 8. Rafa, whoever had the racket, he either collected the racket or had the hand behind him. But then since then, he's from 2008, he's actually took the hand into the body. So this is the Rafa. And again, we have that tight tuck into the body. So those are the three endings. So what difference do they make? Because they must make a difference because there's no way that Nadal and Jokovic would make such drastic change to the end of their strokes if they couldn't see a benefit. So first of all, when we collect the racket with the left hand, and when we do that, that gives us a combination of power and control. The collect here, we go into the stroke and collect the racket, then we still get rotation and racket speed, but we get good control. So if you're having trouble finding the spots, if you're having trouble simply hitting the backhands regularly of your opponents, then this might be the best finish for you to go to. The second finish we're going to look at is the finish that Jokovic evolved to, and that's where the arm goes back with the racket. So it looks something like this one, go up and into this position here. Now, if you look at Jokovic in the early stage of his career, the biggest problem he had with the serve was a deceleration through the ball. Now, he tried to make many changes to correct this, but quite simply, when you pull the hand back with the racket, it's almost impossible to decelerate through contact with the ball. So I come through here, up and through, and the deceleration through the ball is not going to happen. So if you have a problem in pushing and getting tight through the stroke and decelerating, then this might be the ending for you. This might be a good experiment to make to add this to your serve. And the third finish, which Nadal changed to, is where we pull the hand into the body. So up, in. And this tucked in position creates a faster rotation. Now in the early stages of his career, Nadal relied much too much on a slice serve without too much speed, using his uh, left-handedness. But obviously the players get familiar with that and the ball's been hit harder than ever. And so that wasn't gonna work forever. And it was only gonna work on a clay court. So. He added rotation and a much faster rotation of the body by pulling the hand in. A couple of good demonstrations or examples of this and how it works is if you look at boxers, they jab with one hand, but when they want a big punch, they pull this hand in as this hand goes out. Or ice skaters, when they make a pirouette, they're slow when their hands are out and they're fast when the hands come into the body. So this finish makes for more rotation and a natural faster rotation of the body and it creates more power. So if you're having trouble actually making speed on the ball, even though you are swinging aggressively and quickly through the ball, then this might be the ending for you 
and it might be a good thing to experiment with. But how to make these finishes quickly, how to make these changes almost instantly. And a great way of making changes in your serve is to shadow with something called bilateral symmetry. This is where the two hands move together to help create a new motor end zone, a new muscle memory. Um, there's more information on bilateral symmetry in the comment section if you want to know more about what it actually is. So what I'm going to do to demonstrate all three of these is I'm going to go into my trophy pose and I'm going to have the palms of my hand about that far apart facing each other. So I go up into trophy pose and now I've put my left hand about well, maybe 40, 50 centimeters from my right hand and they're facing each other. And I'm going to bring the hands down together and I become very aware of what's happening with the arms. And now I shadow the first finish. And now, I'm going to just turn to here, you'll see better. So now I shadow the first finish. And now the same position, and I'm going to shadow second finish. And again. And now, from the same position, the hands close together facing each other, I'm going to shadow the third finish. And because the hands are close together and moving in symmetry with each other, then it's much easier for me to be aware of what they're actually doing within the serve. Then, depending on which of these endings you want to experiment with, and that depends on where you think your problems lie. Are you decelerating pushing? Are you having trouble with acceleration? Or are you having trouble with consistency, accuracy, and placement? So whichever one you've chosen to try and apply to your game, we now go from shadows into actually hitting the ball. I hope these endings make sense and I'd love to know how it works if you play with them, experiment with them and try to apply them to your game. Some of the best players who've ever lived have changed their serves and improved their games with these endings. It'd be interesting to know how it works in your game. If you like my ideas on tennis, have a look at our books on Amazon. In the books, we provide very detailed breakdown of the biomechanics, the anatomy of the human body as well. So if people have injuries, it shows you what muscle groups you're using at what time in the strokes which is a great way of avoiding injury or helping you recover from an injury. And then we provide super simple solutions such as these, which help you make real change in your game. Or for more personalized help, have a look at what we're doing with online coaching. I'm helping players in over 30 countries all over the world. We work one-to-one -one on a personal basis every week with these players. It's a unique service and it really works. For more information, have a look at the website or email me for details. So use bilateral symmetry in your game to find these endings but choose the right one for you. Do you need more acceleration? Do you need more precision? Or are you having trouble with tension, stress, and slowing the racket down? Choose the appropriate ending, experiment with it, apply it, and you'll serve better today. Thanks for watching. See you next time for more unique tennis lessons that really work.